Hello and welcome back. I'm so excited to paint with you all today. I am still feeling a little bit under the weather, so I apologize for <clears throat> my scratchy voice, but I'm doing okay, I promise. Uh, just losing my voice a little bit. So we are going to be painting this lovely little farm scene and we have a nice big sun in the background. We're going to be doing kind of um, a row or rows of a field here with these big bushes in the corner and a tree on this side. Um, I love these new landscapes that we're exploring that are simple, very simple shapes with some dramatic shading or shadowing and um, also something just a little odd or different. So our sun is very large. Our trees are not very realistic shaped. They're going to have um, really tall, high canopy. Um, so I love this kind of whimsical, you know, you're not always following the rules of reality. You can add in kind of whatever you want, but then following some of the rules with shadows and shading. So just a lot of fun. So let's get started. I am painting on Arsh 100% cotton paper just a small sheet of it here. It's probably about a four by six, five by seven. Um, I am going to be using, excuse me, <coughs> uh, the colors I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using um, a variety of yellows. So I'm going to use my Dyrolide yellow and probably my cadmium yellow light hue here. And I'm definitely probably going to add colors as I go. I'm going to be using my alizarin crimson. I will probably pull in my quidacridone gold. Another yellow slash orange color. This quin gold and core, when it's fully saturated, I really think of it as an orange, but when it's diluted, it can be more of a yellow. Um, and then last but not least, I think we're going to do dioxazine purple. Or no, not last but not least, almost last but not least, we're definitely going to pull in some sap green here to go along with the whole thing. So it's going to be a very bright, very warm. These are all warm colors with the exception of this purple. Um, well, actually the green as well, but it's a very warm green. <clears throat> we are going to have a nice, beautiful, warm kind of farm scene here. All right, let's, getting drops on my page. I'm gonna lighten this up a little bit. You can kind of see where I'm going. All right, so I'm gonna get started with our core paints. At least that's what I'm using, but whatever paints you have in approximate colors will get you there. And really you can paint yours in whatever colors you want, but I will go over which ones I'm using. So first I'm gonna pick out some cadmium yellow. I'm going to water that down and I'm actually going to paint my rows in my field. I'm going to put a line down each kind of row here along. You can see along the ridge where it, we're going to be creating the illusion that these um, kind of are humped over mounds of in the field. So I'm just blending these out. And then while that is still wet, I'm going to take a little of my Dyrolide yellow, my darker, warmer yellow. And I'm just going to go along this edge here on all of the sections. And again, just blend that out a little bit with just a damp brush. And one more, I'm going to pick up some of that just a little bit of that Quinn Gold 
and do the same thing. Again, while they're still wet, and I'm gonna make a nice thin line of this. There we go. And I'm just gonna put a little bit more of this towards the bottom here, just darkening the bottom. So as if it's kind of rolling towards us, like the hill is coming this way. So there's the sun is back here and there's a little bit of shadow on the front. So I'm just gonna blend that out on the front there on all the sections. And then just pulling color down this way to blend, but increase that highlight a little bit. There we go. And we're gonna let that dry, okay? So we're gonna let it all dry and then we'll come back and decide if we need to darken the color even more. But this will, as we add colors around it, it's going to start changing how we perceive this. But for the most part, it looks how I wanted it to look. We have our separate rows separated by these shadows here. They look like they're curved. Just pulling out a little more highlight there. Okay. Moving on, we have a fence here. We'll do that pretty much at the very end. We have our sky, we have our trees. These trees are gonna be multicolored, dark oranges, reds, and maybe even purples in there. This field over here is going to be green. I'm still trying to decide what I'm going to do with the sky. The tree, I'm going to make a brilliant red color with alizarin crimson. And the sky, I think I have this beautiful, like this big sun up here. I'm trying to decide if I leave that white with a little bit of yellow around the edges and then have the sky almost a brilliant yellow or vice versa. Um... Or if I go just, all right, so let's do this in yellow. What we're gonna do is I am going to use this Dyrolide yellow or Gamboge yellow, very warm yellow, right on the edges of my sun. And I am going to blend it in so the center of the sun is the brightest and the lightest. And you have a little bit of a glare on there, which it'll go away as the paint dries. All right, and then I'm going to blend this out, actually. Into a bright yellow kind of sky. So the edges of this are the darkest of the, the sun, so we can see definition. And then the center is bright white, so it looks like it's kind of gl has a glowing effect. And then the rest of my sky is again a little bit lighter in that yellow color. We're gonna let that all dry and then we're gonna attack these other parts. So go ahead, let it dry, and we'll come back to do the other pieces. Okay, we're back. Let's put in this green field over here. I'm gonna use my sap green. I'm gonna mix it right into my yellow, just cause I don't mind it having a little bit more yellow in it and I didn't have another mixing well. So sap green, I am going to do my best to make the field right next to this, or the, the hill right next to this field, the darkest, and then we are going to wash it out to the lightest. And 
in, adding just a little bit more. And you can do a couple layers on this too. I kind of bring it this way so it kind of goes in this direction. Rinsing my brush off completely. Now it's just a little bit damp and just kind of blending. We're gonna blend down. We're gonna blend from the top down. So we're pushing color down this way as we blend. Because I don't want to really be bringing any more color up. I don't want that to get any darker. All right, there we go. We're going to let that side dry. And now we're going to start to work on our trees. So we have lots of trees, chunky trees in here. And they're all going to be different colors. <clears throat> and I'm noticing I missed an entire row of yellow here. All right, let's see if we can do this. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can do this over again and then I'm going to have to dry it. So I'm putting on the light yellow first. These are going to be right up against the tree line and then I'm putting on the Dyrolide yellow. Next, and then a little quin gold right on the edge, and darker down towards the bottom. So, hopefully, as that dries, it doesn't look completely different than the others. But I am going to have to dry this again completely, so I'm going to pause it, use my hand tool, and then we'll go into our bushes. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Um, all right, let's, so let's get into our bushes. These are going to be alizarin crimsons, quadacridone golds, um, maybe some yellow and purple. We're going to bring in some darker purple color too. So let's start with alizarin crimson. And I want these to all um, kind of be mixed together. So I just have to be careful with placement when I put in my first few colors. So if these are going to be a different color, maybe this one would also be red. And I'm just putting in kind of a medium wash of these. Not super light, but not like it's deepest, darkest, saturated, because I'm going to put in some shadow. Some one there. And then if we could do one here and one here. So this could be red. Because I'm going to have at least two other colors. So just trying to be mindful as I plan these out. And because this one's right in front of the sun, I'm going to make the lightest color even lighter. All right, and then when you're done, you're just gonna let those dry again. This one I probably shouldn't have gone back into. I was trying to fix the edge. I just made it worse. I should have just let it all dry and then addressed it on the next layer. But now you see I have an outline. So I'm gonna have to be mindful of that when I'm building in my other layers to incorporate that. But that's okay. Let it all dry again, nice and quick with a little snap of our fingers. We're gonna get it. So this stage with multiple kind of areas next to each other that you're gonna have to let dry, you're gonna have to practice a little patience. Um, it's just part of the game. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna pull out my Quadacridone Gold. Oh, I had a little purple on my brush there. Pull out some Quin Gold. 
Now again, when this is fully saturated, it looks orange to me, but then as I add water and water it down, it's a, it's very much on the very warm yellow side. All right, so I don't, I'm gonna, I want this one to be, I think the purple color. This one. Do a light version of Quinn Gold. Purple, purple, Quinn Gold. Purple, Quinn Gold. All right, so go ahead and fill in all of your bushes if you're following along with a light wash of all your colors drying in between. All right, we have our initial wash on all of those. It's a nice little um, multicolored um, grouping of bushes. They're so cute. We're gonna add more layers to add shadows and it's gonna become really rich and lovely. But before we do that, or while that's kind of settling and finishing, we're gonna put in this tree over here. So this tree is gonna be a bright, it's gonna be a dark, deep alizarin. So I have the tree kind of drawn in here. I haven't put in the branches yet with paint. I am going to just dab in, look at that beautiful, bright, well, I wouldn't even call it bright. I would call it rich red color. It's almost like a blood red color. And we're even gonna deepen the underside a bit that kind of crosses over the hill. You can see I'm leaving little gaps of white or where the yellow kind of shines through. And there. And now while that's still a little wet, I'm gonna take my alizarin crimson. Let's see. Oops. I really have to put my brushes away. All right, I'm gonna take my alizarin crimson and a little dioxazine purple together and make a really deep, rich kind of maroon burgundy color. And while this is still wet, I'm gonna take some of this and drop it in on the lower leaf areas. Giving that even more weight and richness and depth and shadow underneath. You can see there, move that light a little bit. And as that dries, it's going to soften the transition because it was wet on wet. All right, this side over here, we can start to tackle this with our more rich colors. I'm gonna start with the Quinacridone Gold. I'm gonna work lightest to darkest in terms, even though we're putting in darker shadows, but lightest being the Quinacridone Gold, then we'll do the magenta, and lastly, the purples. So the sun is kind of over here. So I'm gonna play up that brilliance a little bit that um, these shadows and the casting of the sun. I'm gonna switch brushes to something a little smaller. I'm gonna go with an eight here, Princeton Select Eight. <coughs> Like I was saying, I'm gonna play up these shadows. They're gonna be really dark, kind of on the one side, and have a highlight on the top here, and I'm gonna blend together. Just a little water. Now 
And I want my blend to be dramatic, but not too, too dramatic. All right, very good. All right, so let's go to this one up here. Same thing. Nice deep color on the bottom. Rinse off my brush. I'll bring the water to the top and then bring it down to meet the gold at the bottom. And this one up here. And blend it out. All right, while those dry, and I do have a little bit of an edge here, I think I'm gonna solve that by putting the dark red here in the shadow, so I don't think I'll have to worry about that too much. So I'm gonna go into my alizarin crimson. Deep on the bottom here. Blend my way up to the top. I'm gonna to wet this area up here. This almost looks like a little upside down strawberry. Same thing on this one. So this one I want to, hopefully that yellow is completely dry. But if I really go right to the edge, we shouldn't have to worry about that little dark outline we had there with the yellow. and blend from the top. And let's do this one up top here. Pull out a little more alizarin. And if you find that like as these dry, they get too light again and you wanna do another layer, go for it. You don't always have to be exactly like I do it on the video. You can make those decisions as you go as well. But adding another layer is almost always an option. Looking good. I'm just going to add a little more, I think, on this side over here. Bring this side a little higher on the shadow. And just make sure to fill in my little white gaps. Excellent. All right, I'm going to let that dry a little bit because I'm going to go in with the dark purple and I don't want that to bleed into any of my other... Um, bushes there and some of them are still all right we're back and we can do our purple finally so a little diaxazine purple let me see I want a spot to pull that out to I'll get rid of my alizarin mostly all right the diaxazine purple I find to be the most temperamental too with blending Don't know why that is, but she is. I'm sure there is a reason. I'm sure there is a chemical reason or has to do with the chemistry or makeup of the pigment, but, or maybe it's just me. Oh, that one's not too bad. All right, this one over here. 
So this is really fun. I love using some colors that just, they're reminiscent. You know, these purples, reds, and yellows are very reminiscent of kind of fall. And you can definitely see purples in and deep reds in, in foliage and bushes at certain times of the year and certain types of foliage. But this is a little bit more fantasy-ish, a little bit more out of the ordinary of realism, a little bit further away. Um, everything's a little bit brighter, a little bit more contrasty, a little bit more jewel-toned versus being um, a little saturated or desaturated, I'm sorry, desaturated or muted in color. And I think it's just fun. I, I like creating whimsy and things that are a little more fantasy based or imagination based, but that, that live in reality that could, you know, they could be part of your dream world. They're not totally bizarre. Although that would be fun too. All right, I'm just noticing I have this white gap here. I might regret this, but I'm just gonna come in with a little Quinn Gold right in this corner, trying not to touch my purple. There we go. Okay, so we have just a few more things to do. I'm going to come in with Payne's Gray, or you could do a dark brown. I'm just going to skip right to a Payne's Gray, almost black color, to do my fence and my tree. So I'm going to start with my tree. I'm actually going to bring in my liner brush, this little guy to make super thin see how much thinner that is or how much easier that is to make thin lines I still need it to be black though because I'm going to do a lot of secondary kind of branches up here the trunks were fine in that thicker brush but for all my secondary branches and tertiary ones I'm even gonna throw a couple up here inside these little holes. Beautiful. All right, and I'm gonna bring this trunk down just a little further, right there. All right, now the fence is gonna go over top of that. Now I've lost the drawing of my fence. I lightened it up a little too much, so I'm gonna do my best not to mess this up and just go freehand. But basically, once you start the fence posts, they're all parallel to each other. So in terms of their, their perpendicular shape. But as I go further away, and I didn't do this as dramatically as I wanted to, but as you go further away, they get shorter and shorter and shorter, kind of gradually. I didn't do it as gradually as I would have liked, but I want it a little more dramatic. And then we're going to take the kind of cross beam and keeping this line parallel kind of with the ground line here. So it follows that same arc. And then we're gonna give it a secondary cross beam. I don't know if that's what these are called, but cross posts. Oh, and I got a little, I got a little wavy wonky towards the back, but that's okay. All right, beautiful. Now you can add in all kinds of details. You could be done here. I'm gonna add in shadows for my fence and my bush up here. So the sun is coming this way. So we're gonna have shadows coming this way. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. And then you could also add on all kinds of layers of fun funky things, which I will get to. That's the whimsy fun part. All right, so I've just taken my Payne's Gray. I've watered it down a little bit. I let some of this yellowish color kind of leak in there. So I've got this grayish, warm gray, 
almost brownish color. So my fence posts are going to, the shadows are going to come this way. And it's just going to be like a mirror image of what's above, but slanted away from this light source. But they're still going to shrink. They're going to get shorter. So these should actually be a little longer. Shadows can definitely, these will go off the page, be longer in length depending on how you want to communicate how far the sun has gone down. So let's put that line on and this line on. And you can see my shadow is just lighter than the actual fence posts. Okay, so it's coming down this way. So we've created that shadow. You could, I could definitely put a shadow for the tree. It's going to be a little weird because it's going to overlap where the fence is as well. Just using that same kind of color I used. I really need a bigger brush to do the tree. The fence posts were fine with this smaller brush, but to do this bigger tree shadow. So again, that lighter gray, warm gray color, and just an approximation of whatever it was above that was casting that shadow. Okay, and as that dries, that's gonna lighten a little bit. And then lastly, I'm also going to do this bush here is definitely casting some type of shadow. We're doing this light, warm. Because it's casting shadow onto something that is yellow, it should have a warmness to it. There we go. You could go darker. You could go darker, kind of closer to the object. There, I think that's good. So now we have that shadow as well. I'm not going to worry about any other areas of shadows, but I think this is great. That sun looks like it's really glowing back there, producing this really bright and radiant light that's kind of falling onto these trees in the lighter spots, onto the bushes in the lighter spots, and creating our cast shadows. Let's give it a dry, take off our tape, and see what we get. We could definitely go back and add layers of a foreground of leaves in um, a darker color here or a combination of a darker color and bleed proof white like we did in some earlier videos that can add a lot of fun and whimsy to it and I might show you an example of that after this I'll just show you what it would look like afterwards all right there we go Thank you so much. I'm Shana Searcy. It's always a pleasure to paint with you. I can't wait to paint with you again. Thanks for sticking with me, even through my scratchy throat illness. Um, and I can't wait to see you for our next video. All right, I know I already said goodbye, but as promised, here is a sample of just a little bit more detail that I did off camera. Some additions of bleed proof white and some of this darker red color I used for some additional foliage in the foreground just to add a little more depth, a little more interest to the piece. So definitely something you can add or other versions of that to your own piece as well. Thanks so much for painting with me. And as always, it's a pleasure and happy painting everybody.